I got this new game, Melvor Idol, that I wanted to show you. It's a pretty interesting game. Um, and I first heard about it, I think, maybe like a year or two ago. Uh, you may have heard of the game RuneScape. Uh, it's a kind of got a cult following. And I've never played the game, but I've always just been kind of curious about it because there seems to be kind of a big following. And... It just kind of looked like a fun, kind of goofy, role-playing type game. And so somebody created a game, I guess this guy named Malks or Malks, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. He made a game that was inspired by RuneScape, but kind of, I guess, distills it down to um, kind of the fundamental essence of the game. As opposed to RuneScape, I guess there's maybe a lot more to it in terms of gameplay, but Melvor Idol is, it's essentially an idling game where you kind of make decisions and then you let them kind of play out over time, even after you log out, like the game keeps going. And I've found um, that it's been, I've just been playing it for a few days now, so it's still really new for me, but it seems like a really great game for when you want to be able to play a game, but you don't necessarily have time to dedicate, like, you know, sitting down uh, for a long session. This is the kind of game where you can, like, literally just log in for, like, 10 seconds and make a decision and then log out and come back a couple hours later and see what has happened um, based on the decision you made. So I'm just going to show you some of the basics of how I've been playing the game. And I'm really new at the game, and I really haven't read much about it at all. Um, I've just been kind of tinkering around and trying to figure it out for myself, which has been pretty fun and fairly easy to, to figure out. Um, so I'll just kind of show you some of the, the basic stuff. So to start with here, one thing that I think makes this game pretty unique is that you can play it, you know, on your PC or your phone, and the the saves are synced. So there's like a cloud save option here. So it's kind of neat, like you could, you know, play for a little while on your PC, and then, you know, maybe later in the day you're bored and sitting around on your phone, you could log in and play it on your phone, and then when you come back to your computer, you know, you're, you're playing the same, like, persistent world. So you will um, create a character when you first start, which is essentially you're just going to, you know, come up with a name, and that's about it. And then you've created your character, and then you can load it up. So this is my character here, Delfer. Um, I've been playing for a couple days, so I'm going to click click on it, and it's going to ask, you know, if you want to overwrite the cloud save. And you know, most cases you're just going to say yes. So this is going to load you up. And you can see there's just a ton of stuff on the screen here, and it's kind of intimidating And when you first start, but there is a tutorial that'll kind of take you through the basics. And I found that after doing the tutorial, everything, for the most part, kind of made sense, and I was able to just kind of continue playing without much trouble. Um, there are several things that I still don't fully understand and I haven't explored yet, but for the most part, the basics of the game are pretty straightforward. So you've got your bank here. These are like your items that you have. Um, you can find items, you can create items, and they will end up here. And these different tabs are just, you know, I've just sorted the different items that I have. So here um, we have the different combat skills. You know, you've got some kind of basic stuff that you know you would see in most games and then you've got some things prayer and slayer down here which I'll get into that a little bit later um, so you can see all these here you know you can level up you know from 1 to 99 and essentially to train in a skill you just do the skill so if you want to get a higher attack you know you go fight some monsters and um, that'll improve your attack. So then down here we have non-combat skills, and you can see there's a pretty wide variety, and even within each of these, there are sort of like these sub-skills. Um, for example, like with woodcutting, 
you know, you, when you first start off, you can only chop normal trees. And then as your skill gets higher, you can chop different kinds of trees like oak trees, willow trees, etc. And the different kinds of trees, they will give you, you know, the ability to craft different sorts of items. And you can also just sell the resources. They're worth more, you know, the higher up the, the ladder you go here. Um, and, you know, there's fishing, you know, where I, you know, these are sort of representing like different lakes, I guess, that you could, or oceans that you could go and fish in. And as you get better and better at fishing, you can start fishing for different types of things. Like you can see here, I have raw shrimp unlocked, but I do not have this unlocked because I'm not level 40 yet. So I'll just kind of show you an example here of how the system works a little bit. So I'm going to chop some wood. So first I'm going to decide which tree I want to cut. We'll go with oak. So now I'm chopping wood. And you can see this bar up here is, you know, in between each tree. And then like after you chop down a tree, you can see down here, it's letting me know that I got some logs from it. So if I go up to my bank, you'll see over here the oak logs it's ticking up, you know, as, as I'm chopping. So what I was mentioning earlier about this being an idle game is that, you know, basically I just said, start chopping and now I'm chopping and I can log out and I will continue chopping, which is kind of neat. So you, you know, can log out, you know, maybe I log out for an hour and I come back and now I have a thousand oak logs. And then let's say we want to stop chopping and do something with this wood. So we could um, go over to like fletching, for example, and we could select arrows over here and then we could create some arrow shafts using the wood that we have. Um, although in this case, um, you make arrow shafts with normal wood and, oh, I guess, you know what, we can switch the recipe here. So. Yeah, so then let's say we want to make some arrow shafts. We come over here and we can use the wood that we just got to start making stuff. So, oh, and you, you could see down there, I don't know if you caught it, but it said my bank is full. So up here, you can see it says 58 of 58. So all my slots are filled up. And in order to get more slots, I have to buy them. So I could go over to the shop and in the shop here, you can see there's all kinds of different things you can buy. Um, in this case, we are going to do buy a general upgrade. So to get another bank slot, we're going to pay 63,000 gold, which is pretty expensive. Um, and it, it scales up like when you first start, I think you have a bank of like 12 items that you can hold. And the first time you buy another bank slot, it's fairly cheap. It's like a thousand gold or something like that. But then each one after that becomes more and more expensive. So I've unlocked a lot of these at this point. So now it's, you know, really expensive. So we'll go ahead and buy one. And see, now it says uh, 58 of 59. So now we can go back to our... Um, fletching over here and create these arrow shafts out of the wood. And you can see now we're, we're just creating arrow shafts. And just like before, you can see now the, the logs are going down over here and the arrow shafts are going up. Now I'll show you how the combat works. It's kind of an interesting system that I've never really seen before. Um, so essentially you'll click on, you know, any of these combat things up here that'll get you over to this combat screen. And there are three main areas where you can fight. So there's these combat areas. So these are, I guess, kind of like imaginary areas. You got your goblin village and inside the goblin village, you have, you know, these two different types of goblins that you can fight. So to fight one of them, you just click fight. And then you'll immediately start fighting um, whatever you selected. So you can see now we're fighting a goblin. And so the, the combat is essentially going on in intervals here. You can see like our attack intervals 2.2. And 
the goblin has an attack interval of three seconds. So every time that ticks up there, it's basically going to like roll a dice, and if we're successful, we do damage. If we're not successful, the you know it just starts over again and it keeps trying. So as you're you're killing these goblins, you'll get loot down here, and it'll just keep building up. And there's there's essentially just endless goblins here. We could just stay here all day and just fight goblins if we wanted. We could, you know, we're strong enough that we could just walk away and just keep fighting these goblins all day and just keep gathering up loot. So once you've, um, you know, had, a, had your fill of fighting, you know, you just hit run or area select here. And it'll just automatically take all the loot. And you can see there again that my bank is full, so um, I was not able to take some of this loot. If I if I want to get it, get that loot, I need to go sell some things. So um, I don't really need these arrow shafts. I'm going to go ahead and sell those. Um, I don't need. I don't really need these logs. So we'll just go ahead and sell those as well. So that freed up two slots for us. So now we could go back over to combat and we could click on two of these items that we want to loot. And then we're just going to have to discard the rest because we can't, we can't um, hold it in our bank right now. Or alternately, you know, like I could go over here and, you know, do stuff with this stuff here and keep freeing up slots to get all of it. But in this case, um, I don't really need this stuff, so I'm not even going to bother with it. So in addition to just kind of these one-off battles that you can have, um, and you can see there's a pretty wide variety of different monsters that you can fight, like we were doing with those goblins. And, um, oh, and I should mention too, if you want to see what loot the monsters drop, you just click on the drops button. So, like, these chickens will always drop bones, and sometimes they will also drop feathers and raw chicken. And, they're, you know, all the different monsters will have different drops. So, like, this guy, you see, he has, like, a lot of different options of different stuff he could drop for his loot. So, that's kind of the most simple combat um, option, and... Then there are these other two, and I have to admit, I don't fully understand the Slayer skill yet, but um, essentially, from what I can tell, if you choose one of these, so these are sort of, I guess, like special monsters, and you can see it says there's like unique drops, so each of these will, you know, have maybe better items or special items that they drop. And um, so if you start, like, we'll start fighting these mummies. Um, while you're fighting these guys, I think that your Slayer skill over here goes up. And I'm not really sure what the Slayer skill is yet, but um, it seems kind of interesting. There's also these Slayer tasks here. Um... And I'll get into that in a second, but you can see up here, like, this mummy, he's he's doing some fairly serious damage to us, so the way you heal is with food. So I have 24 of these, um, I think it's beef or something like that, here, and every time I eat one, it, it heals 50 hit points, so... Um, as you know, you're attacking difficult monsters, you're going to kind of want to, like, ride this food button... Um, because, you know, your health's going to be going down and down, so you need to raise it back up as you're fighting them. So we'll kill this guy off here, and then I'll show you a few other things. Okay, so he died. So once again, our bank is full. Whatever, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so there are these special Slayer tasks, and I don't totally understand it, but... Um, Right now, this task, which I'm not going to do because it's going to take a long time and it looks kind of hard, would be to kill 38 of these Black Knights. So if I click jump to enemy, I think it would take me there and I would just start fighting. 
And I think it's sort of like a challenge, you know, like it, if you succeed, then you get a lot of Slayer points. And I'm assuming the Slayer points are pretty good, but I just don't really know what they are yet. So, um, yeah, so just like in the, the combat areas, there's a ton of these different Slayer monsters that you can fight. And you can see, you know, some of them are pretty serious. Um, so then the other fighting option are dungeons. And these dungeons are essentially you're going to fight like a series of monsters. And then if you win, you get a chest at the end. So I'll show you like this chicken coop. If we click start dungeon, so I'm going to start fighting in this dungeon. So you can see here, I've, you know, I'm going to have to fight six different monsters and it, it tells you which one you're on. Um, and I'm just like mowing down these chickens because <laughs> they're, they're pretty easy. Um, there is a little bit of humor in the game. It's kind of funny. Some of the monsters are, are a little bit funny, like, um, you, you fight like farmers and when you kill them, you get their seeds and fertilizer, stuff like that. So, and some of the, the bosses are kind of funny, like this mama chicken. So this is like the boss of this dungeon. So once we finish killing this mama chicken, then we'll get the egg chest. And I just was making some room in the inventory so that we can actually hold the egg chest because otherwise I think we would just lose it. And you can see this chicken is uh, kind of hard. He's he's beating me up a little bit, but we got plenty of food, so we're just going to keep hacking away until he's dead. And we'll do a little time lapse here so you don't just have to sit here while I fight this mama chicken. Okay, so we have defeated the mama chicken. And you see you get this little message, and you saw the stuff pop up down here. So, now that the mama chicken is dead, we get our reward, which is this egg chest. Um, and I'm going to sell a couple things here just so that we have room for whatever might be in this chest. Ooh, we got a ruby necklace too. That's pretty good. Okay, we're going to sell these arrows. We don't really need these. Okay, so now we'll open this chest. And we got a ton of feathers. And you might see I already have a lot of feathers because I've already killed that chicken, that mama chicken several times. And you can just keep going back. Like, I could go fight it again right now if I wanted to. So that's like the, the basics there, and um, I'll just show you kind of, uh, I guess, like a time lapse um, of what you can do. So let's say I just have like 10 seconds I can log in here, and um, I've got some adamantite, 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 I've got some adamantite ore and some coal ore, and I want to make some adamantite bars here and you can see the ingredients are listed here so I want to make a bunch of these so I'm just going to go ahead and hit create and then you can just you know essentially like close the game and or you could log out you could go play with like a different character if you wanted so you can see right here it's telling you you know, that I'm smithing right now, even though that I'm not logged in, I'm still smithing. And I'm going to go ahead and log out and do some other things for a while. And I'll show you what it looks like when I come back. Okay, we're back. We're going to see what has happened since we left. So I'm going to fire up the game. So we've been gone about an hour. You can see here it's telling us how long we've been away and what we've been doing while we've been away. So we'll go ahead and load that up. 
And when you log back in, it'll give you a little summary of what happened since you left. So I gained a bunch of experience in smithing, and I also created a bunch of adamantite bars. And, you know, I would have continued to just keep doing that, um, creating the adamantite bars, but I ran out of coal. So it's, uh, at some point, I ran out of coal, and then I just stopped doing what I was doing. Uh, which is a good point. Like, if you're going to leave this sitting for a long time, you kind of want to make the most of it. So you would want to do something where you could just continue doing it, like wood cutting. Um, you could start wood cutting, and then you could just go to bed, and then wake up the next day, and you'll just have a huge stack of wood. And the other thing you may have is bird's nests. You get bird's nests from chopping down trees, and you get, can get seeds from within the nests. So another thing you could do overnight is mining is another good thing to do overnight. Fishing you could do overnight, although if you're going to do fishing overnight, you're going to want to make sure that you have a lot of slots open in your inventory because when you're fishing, you can get a wide variety of items. I'll just show you a couple more things here before I wrap it up. Um, you may see down here the farming tab is blinking, that's because something is ready to harvest. So you can get seeds in various ways, and then when you get seeds, you can plant them here. So I planted the sweet corn, and it is ready to harvest. So you just click to harvest it, and you'll see just by harvesting, I went up a level there in my farming ability. So there's three different types here of things you can grow. Allotments, which I believe is mainly vegetables and things of that nature. Then there's also herbs, which we have some of those ready to harvest. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And then you can also plant trees. And you can see I have some oak trees growing here, but they've still got quite a bit of time left before they're going to be ready to harvest. So then when you want to plant new stuff, um, you can go ahead and plant it right away if you have the seeds, or you could also get some compost, and the compost will increase the odds of success for your seeds. Um, I've got quite a bit of seeds and quite a bit of um, vegetables, so I'm not going to put fertilizer this time, but normally I would if it, if it was important to me. But I've got a ton of these onions, so I'm just going to go ahead and plant them with no fertilizer and just take the risk. And same with this garum seed. I've got a lot of those, so I'm not going to worry about getting the compost. So you can see, you know, in 89 minutes, it'll be ready for harvest. And um, I wanted to mention a couple other combat-related things. Um, I didn't really get into magic or any of the combat, like real specific combat stuff. So I'm not going to get into super detail, but down here you've got your inventory. And obviously, like, depending on what you've got equipped, it will affect your stats. And, like, right now I've got more of, like, a melee set equipped. But if I wanted to do ranged fighting, then I would want to equip a bow and I would probably want to wear different armor, because you can see the armor I'm wearing now uh, is not good for ranged. Like, I get a, a negative modifier to my attack. But if you put on leather armor, then you'll get a better ranged attack. So this set that I've got right on, on right now, like, I wouldn't want to use a bow with it. Um, so you can switch sets you know, by going to your inventory, and then you'd click equip, and here's my leather armor here. I would equip that instead of the armor I've got on now. Uh, there are a couple of interesting other combat things that I discovered, it's like the summoning. You can create these familiar tablets, and when you create them, then you can summon a familiar while you're fighting. So, like, if I made this one um, and I had it equipped, then every time I 
land a hit, I get 30 gold pieces, which is pretty cool. And you can see there are a lot of different things that could yet to be, you know, things yet to be unlocked here. Um, and the other thing is prayer. And you may have noticed I got some bones when I was fighting guys earlier, and you can bury those bones. And when you bury them, you get prayer points. And you can see the different prayers you have by clicking like on these different tabs here. It lets you see different things. And if you go to the prayer one, there's this thick skin. So if I was fighting a monster, I could activate this prayer. And then every time um, I attack, I get this little bonus and it's going to cost me one prayer point every time I use it but it's a nice little bonus during combat that I could um, get plus 10% melee evasion and yeah I guess I'll leave it at that um, obviously there's a lot more to it and to be honest a lot of it I still haven't even discovered yet so but it's been a, a pretty fun game and I I will say, like, when I first saw it, it looked kind of boring to me and kind of weird because it's like, it just seems like a bunch of menus and progress bars and it seems like you're not really doing anything. And I even, I remember reading in the Steam reviews, there was somebody who mentioned, like, their description of it was progress bar, the game. And so, like, on the surface, I think just looking at the game it seems kind of boring or it just kind of seems like what's the point but i found that the more i've been playing it it's it's pretty addicting and it's pretty fun because you you don't really have to put in much effort you just kind of make decisions and then walk away and come back and make another decision and it's kind of fun um, and it's not very time consuming at all so yeah overall i would recommend it it's a it's a fun easy game nice way to just kind of pass the time and get the feeling of, you know, progress and playing a game without having to put in a lot of effort.